I'm going to ask you a simple question. Are you easily distracted? Okay, but you will pay attention with Ritalin. That's what it is. Review of the uh, coagulation system. There's some of you that are big time easily distracted. Okay. Now, the extrinsic system has factor seven. Factor seven, factor seven, factor seven. How about that for more? End of discussion on the extrinsic system. All right, then we have the intrinsic system. That's got four dudes in it. It's got 12, 11, 9, and 8. Your family of four for the intrinsic system. Both systems share the same final common pathway. Don't stop. That an extrinsic, intrinsic, they both use the same final common pathway. 10, 5, 2 is prothrombin, 1 is fibrinogen, clock. Now let's do the prothrombin time. The PT detects is evaluate your extrinsic system down to the formation of a clot. So it's only detecting and only dealing with these things right here. So we have 7, 10, 5, 2, and 1. The international normalized ratio is just a standardized way of doing it. Now the PTP partial thromboplastin time, you already probably figured out, is a test of the intrinsic system all the way down to the formation of a clot. So that would be 12, 11, 9, 8, 10, 5, 2, and 1. Okay, so the pro time was prolonged means it's either 7, 10, 5, 2, or 1. Is that correct? If your, pro, if your PTT is prolonged, it's either 12, 11, 9, 8, 10, 5, 2, or 1. 10 and 2 are vitamin K dependent factors in the final common pathway. So what's the PTT in a patient on warfarin? Prolonged. See, some of you honestly think that the PTT is normal when you're on warfarin. Baloney. Baloney. Baloney because two of the vitamin K dependent factors in the final common pathway. Baloney. Who ever taught you that? Baloney. So I'm going to ask you a simple question. So both pro time and PTT are both prolonged whether you're on warfarin or whether you're on heparin. But it just turns out that pro time does a better job in following warfarin and the PTT does a better job in following heparin. Period. Just got you another point. Just got you another point. Just got you another point. Don't you worry, we're keeping going. Listen, that's my friend Plasmin. Because what it does is breaks down things. It loves to break down fibrinogen and fibrin, and it likes to break down coagulation factors. It destroys things. Fibrinolytic. Fibrinolytic system. Now, there's lots of different pieces that are left over when it breaks open a clot. D dimers. What's di mean? We call those fibrin degradation products. So I'm going to ask you a simple question. What's the single best screening test for disseminated intravascular coagulation? The answer is D dimers. What's di mean? That's also a board question. D dimers, about one year ago, went on the exam. I was waiting for it to come because it's the absolute best test for DIC. And what D-dimers is detecting is only those fibrin fragments that have a link. In other words, where there's two of them held together, that's what the test picks up. What does it absolutely, unequivocally prove? There was a fibrin clot. Would you see that in disseminated intravascular coagulation? You bet you would. If D-dimers are present, a fibrin clot was there. Also, it's very commonly used in the pulmonary embolus. That's the end of my discussion. That's the end of my discussion.